Hi everyone, it's Jerry. This is Game 2 from the 2011 Women's World Chess Championship match. Thus far, both players are tied, having a half point each. And in this round, Hu Yi Fan on the white end, opening up with e4. Humpy Kanru playing e5. After knight f3, knight f6, the Petrov's defense, we have uh, knight takes on e, d6, the knight retreats, and black recaptures. Uh, the move order is important at this point. You definitely do not want to take on e right away because queen e2 and black is not so happy. Uh, this knight can't move and um, it's just uh, bad news from here. So kick the knight back in other words first and only then recapture on e. And now in the game we saw knight c3. One other possible variation is to run with d4, d5, and some moves on the white end would be bishop d3, castle, c4, knight c3. These three moves in particular, bishop d3, pawn to c4, knight c3, their main aim is to take care of the one piece that finds itself in the white position. So the pawn c4 move, it influences that knight in, in indirectly because this is a, a supporter for that knight, and uh, the other two moves, of course, hit that knight directly. So we don't have that. Instead, knight c3, still challenging that knight, but it, this is the most direct way to do it. After knight takes, pawn takes, white is capturing away from the center, compromising their structure, and is hoping for rapid development at this point, and looking to also castle queenside, where at which point, as soon as uh, white does castle queenside, the king is going to be, of course, off that open e-file, and also uh, the rook is going to be well placed on the uh, half open d-file. You don't always get that when you castle queen side in chess, but in this case, since there's a half open file, the rook would already function well. So, more development, bishop e7, bishop e3, black castles, queen d2, and now queen to e8, which is a very awkward looking move. She's looking to pivot on a4. Now, if white is to show any type of an advantage in this opening, they pretty much have to go queen side, because otherwise there's not much of an imbalance, and in order for there to really be some sort of play in chess, there has to be some type of an imbalance. It could occur in many forms, pawn structure, space, um, castling on opposite wings and trying to win a race towards, um, let's say, opening files towards your opponents as king, um, th things of that nature. But uh, that's that's really the only one that I'm really seeing. You have to castle it on the opposite sides at this point and do things like h4, bishop d3, knight g5 type of, types of things targeting h7. So seeing that, the, the white queen, excuse me, the black queen is looking to pivot on that a4 square and induce some weaknesses, seeing how white pretty much has to go queen side, otherwise there's not much going on. So white runs with it, castles queen side, queen a4, king to b1. Uh, you really do not want to make a pawn move unless you have to near your king, so it's not necessary just yet, so king b1. And if you're going to castle queen side, you really do have to be prepared to make that one additional move with your king towards that corner square, watching now over that uh, a2 pawn. So knight c6, more development. Here we go with h4, pivot point on that g5 square, but it really does not show itself in this game at all. In fact, just a couple moves from now, we have the queens coming off, and things start to be quite uh, dry from here on out. After bishop e6, meeting the threat of um, the capture on that a2 pawn, just b3, counterattacking move, hitting that queen, backing her up, and now after knight d4, challenging both minor pieces here, black just cashes in, undoubles the white pawns, but in exchange for it, gets the queens off. And so now there's not really a whole lot going on. Black just, I believe, has to make maybe one move just to make sure there's not going to be some sort of uh, an imbalance in the position, and they do that, which is d5, not allowing white to just play d5 themselves and gain some space in the center. So just d5. If they ran with something like this, this could maybe be annoying. This could be a strongly placed piece on that d4 square. Uh, but we, we don't have that going on. Instead, just black plays d5, and white goes with h5, looking for some imbalance, looking to gain some space in some way. And this is the, the one uh, thing that I guess white does have at this point is some space advantage on the king side, but can that really translate into anything significant? I'm not so sure. And so black with h6 says, you know, pawns close to my king are a little bit scary, so let's just put it to a great halt right away. 
and similarly after bishop d3 black plays a5 and white does a4 you really do not want to allow this pawn to engage with that b3 pawn and uh, one reason for that is because then white always has to be guessing if this pawn is just allowed to get there let's say rook to e2 okay because this is an open file but after a4 then it's like okay is black gonna capture is black gonna play here and have a pawn be very deep in my position you don't really want to get into that situation where you have to keep guessing is it gonna open is it gonna close let's just put a, a great halt to it right away after a5 a4 bishop b4 these are weakened squares as a result of this pawn having moved to that a4 square this bishop is uh, just trying to uh, well take the rook but just make things a bit uncoordinated on the white end but after bishop or rook to d1 bishop c3 so white has a little bit of untangling to do and in fact in in this game it's really white who has uh, the bigger struggle going on so uh, just it's a little bit of a problem to solve at this point looking to get rid of the one piece that's finding itself in the white position so this this is the the plan at this point rook to h4 watches over this pawn so that the bishop can uh, reroute itself to either d2 c1 it has options so after c6 it's not it's not a move that's directed at watching over this pawn in as much as getting ready to support this b5 advance and that's really the last point to be focused on in this game because that's really the next type of possible pawn break that can come about so after c6 the bishop relocates to c1 after bishop d7 again prepping this b5 advance we have white challenging the bishop black avoids this and white is persistent on trying to get these bishops off with bishop a3 rook to uh, the open file and there's not really a whole lot that's gonna it doesn't play there to try and make use of some squares along this file in as much as just get ready to tuck that bishop all the way back to that f8 square but there's not really uh, much going on we just have white okay the rook did its job from that h4 square watches over d4 for just that moment and now it's just back to getting uh, more coordinated so rook, rook back to that corner b5 c3 chases the bishop back and after bishop f8 we have the capture on b and then white challenging this rook on the e-file bishop back to uh, d6 bishop a3 the exchange of rooks and only then b4 um, you definitely do not want to take this is just going to be a loss this bishop is now in a pin black would win so just retreat first after a4 so again this is really just black putting pressure on white but it's not really going to turn out to be enough in fact uh, reviewing this game with the computer there wasn't much uh, the evaluation did not change a whole lot at all I think it was maybe like a point two, uh, a point two change uh, in one direction or another but nothing really beyond that so both players playing very accurately uh, white in particular because they're the side that has uh, quite a bit of pressure being placed under them or on them so we have b takes a bishop takes looking for a discovered attack on that king or discovered check moving that bishop the king gets out of it right away and now some more exchanges b takes c bishop takes c and some checks going on now i guess there is one other possibility of something like b3 but i'm not so sure that this this might be a case of black maybe overextending one of their pawns and uh you know maybe we could have something like c4 and then this bishop could be putting pressure on the pawn maybe there could be a rook lift it might be the case that this pawn would fall it's um this king is uh, just a couple steps away from adding more fuel to it so uh, maybe that is one of the um things that black was kind of thinking about uh, do you really want to do this and have to worry you know are you going to maybe lose that pawn is it going to be overextended in other words so we didn't have that we just had b takes c bishop takes and uh, some checks are being thrown in it's important to not run to that c1 square that's going to be game over uh, bishop to uh, f4 is uh, the way to do it all these squares are now protected by both uh, black bishops and that rook and so after something like bishop d2 which is uh, i guess the the best move at that point or um it's just lost at that point you just you can't play king to c1 
bishop gives check, the rook would chase the king away, and then the bishop would fall. So that's why at this point, after the rook gives check, we don't have king to c1. Instead, king a2, rook to a8, just dodging discovered checks, and uh, the king is just getting a bit closer, maybe watching over some entry points from that white rook. But uh, what else is there? Uh, I guess one other possibility is rook to b3, but white at this point is probably just content with the draw because they're certainly not any better at this point. We could have rook check, and if bishop takes, then this rook falls. Um, so it would essentially be a, an exchange of rooks. Otherwise, it's a case of black winding up in some sort of a pin, and that's not really the way to be playing on the black side. So uh, that's probably why we're not seeing rook to b3 at this point, but rather just uh, trying to maybe get that king uh, going to a, a wrong square, I guess. But it, it's just not happening. After, after rook to a1, we have some more checks being thrown in. Bishop f4, bishop d2, the rook gives check, the king goes back to b2. And at this point, we could have bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop, and a case of uh, opposite color bishop ending, and that's, that's absolutely going nowhere. This is a uh, a perfect example of uh, a drawn type of position with these opposite color bishops. Uh, so we, we don't enter that territory. How the game actually finishes up is by just the rook going back and forth, giving check to that white king, and the game ending up in a threefold repetition, or in other words, a draw. So uh, that's uh, the result from game two. So uh, as always, I hope you got something out of it. Take care.